Uh, my presentation is on the uh, topic of history and development of Tibetan medicine, or Suarigba. So, <clears throat> uh, before knowing the history and development of Tibetan medicine, it's important to know the origin of uh, uh, Tibetan medicine, or Suarigba. So, uh, there are some scholars, uh, they have mentioned that uh, the Suarigba or the Tibetan medical system is originated uh, more than 2,500 500 years ago. And there are also scholars who have mentioned that uh, it, the system of medicine is as old as the Tibetan civilization itself. So in some research articles, it has mentioned that the modern human first inhabited in Tibetan Plato's at least 21,000 years ago. So this is uh, kind of uh, the basic idea of Tibetan history and how old uh, it is. Then uh, when we talk about the origin of Tibetan medicine, there are a few aspects. The <clears throat> first one is based on the uh, practical experiences and discoveries that we made in day-to-day -day life while dealing with the different types of diseases that are occurring in the Tibetan high plateaus. For example, um, through those experience, practical experience and discoveries, we have no, known the uses of boiled water for treating indigestion. Likewise, for treating inflamed swelling, we have discovered and experienced that uh, the uses of cold stone compression to treat inflamed swelling. So there are many such practicals, medical practices that has been discovered, that has been known through practical experiences and discoveries through our day-to-day -day life. Then the, then the second aspect of origin of Tibetan medicine is based on the studying of animal behaviors. So uh, there are many medicine plants which has been discovered and uh, have been known the use of these medicine plants by observing animal and birds when they are injured. So the scholars have observed the behavior of these animals and birds when they are injured and see what kind of medicine plants they have used, they are using to treat themselves. So through these kind of observation, there have, we have discovered many such medicinal plants <clears throat> to treat injuries uh, like that. For example, by observing uh, the behavior of musk deer when they are injured, we have discovered the uses of these types of plants. We call it Sosia hukirea. Sosia hukirea is a botanical name. In Tibetan, it is called gudu. So likewise, by observing the behavior of sky clock, we have discovered the uses of uh, Sosoro series Hukarena. In Tibetan, it is called Sorkon Sebo. So there are many such medicinal plants which has been, uh, the uses of these medicinal plants has been known by observing the behavior of, behavior of these animals and birds. So this is the second aspect of the origin of Tibetan medicine. And the uh, uh, third aspect of origin of Tibetan medicine is based on the knowledge of burn tradition. Burn tradition is, uh, exists uh, around 600 BC before the establishment of Buddhism in Tibet. So uh, we consider the first uh, physician of Tibet is uh, considered as the eldest son of the burn founder, Dumba uh, and. His eldest uh, son, uh, name of the eldest son is Chebu uh, Tishi. Uh, so he is considered as the first physician of, physician of Tibet. So at that time, around 600 BC, there is a separate medical practices before the flourish of Buddhism in Tibet. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> then the fourth aspect <coughs> is uh, the integration of knowledges. So. Uh, we can say that uh, the present Tibetan medical system is the integration of uh, many knowledge, such as the indigenous uh, Tibetan medical practices. Then there is the knowledge from uh, Buddhism, then knowledge from Ayurveda, Chinese medicine, and Persian medicine. So at present, we can say that the present Tibetan medical system is an integrated system of all these traditions. <clears throat> so as I mentioned, uh, around 600 BC, there is the burn tradition, so it has its own medical practices. 
So that, that uh, becomes a kind of indigenous uh, Tibetan medical system. So the eldest son of the Burns founder is considered as the first physician of Tibet. Then in the fourth century, <coughs> during the uh, reign of 28th king of Tibet, Thathodurin Yenze, uh, very famous two physicians from India visit Tibet and practice there. And they become very famous in Tibet. And even the king uh, requested them to stay in Tibet and practice their medical knowledge and teach their medical knowledge. Or <clears throat> even the king has offered his uh, daughter, Princess, uh, Princess Yigiracha, to be the wife of uh, uh, Bijigaji. So later, uh, uh, Princess, Princess Yigiracha gave birth to uh, uh, sorry, Tungi uh, Thorjo. So Tungi Thorjo have learned uh, medicine from his father and become very famous. And uh, his son has served as uh, the personal physician to the kings of their time for the next four generations. And you can say this is the beginning of, uh, uh, of connect, uh, having connection with Ayurveda since fourth century. Then in, in the 7th century, <clears throat> during the reign of the uh, 33rd king of Tibet, Songzhen Gambu, and physicians from India, China, Persia were invited. So the king, at that time, each physician wrote, uh, uh, wrote one treaty, one treaty, and later that uh, treaty was incorporated into one text that is called Mijibek Sunja. And also at that time, the king's wife, Chinese wife, uh, Wenxin Guangzhou also brought a Chinese medical text, and uh, which was later translated into Tibetan. Tibetan, and uh, one of the important medical texts, or Chinese medical texts, uh, called uh, Huangdi Neijing. So it is also one of the reference texts for Gushi. Gushi is the principal text of uh, the present Tibetan medical system. So, uh, so from here we can know there is uh, um, the. Uh, uh, interconnection of Chinese medicine also in, in, in the Tibetan present Tibetan medical system. Then in, uh, in the 8th century, during the 38th king of Tibet, Chisung uh, Diuzhen, Buddhism began to flourish in Tibet. And uh, at that time, a very important medical conference was held at Samye uh, in Tibet under the patronage of the king Chisung uh, Diuzhen. And uh, many physicians from India, China, Persia, East Turkestan, Nepal were invited to share their knowledge and uh, exchange in their knowledge with the Tibetan physicians. And uh, during that uh, time, uh, Elder Yudo Yundergumbu and has represented Tibet at the conference. <coughs> then uh, uh, Elder Yudo Yundergumbu uh, is considered as the father of Tibetan medicine. And he has traveled many times to India and China to study medicine. And uh, after studying medicines from India and China, and uh, in particular after the conference that held at Samye in Tibet, he began to integrate those medical knowledges. And uh, he wrote the older version of Gushi, as I mentioned, the main uh, text of Tibetan medicine, or the principal text of Tibetan medicine. So he has written uh, it in 8th century. So that became the basis of the present Tibetan medical system. And he has also established the first medical institute uh, called Tanadu in Kongbu in Tibet. Then uh, uh, in the 10th ten, century, uh, the great translator Rinchin Sangbo put great contribution in, in reviving Buddhism and Tibetan medicine after the destruction of Buddhism. Uh, by the 42nd king, Lang Tharma, in the 9th century. And uh, the uh, uh, Lozo Warinjin Sangbo, great translator, Lozo Warinjin Sangbo, also studied uh, Astanga Hidriya Samhida and his commentary, uh, Dasir Moonlight. If you translate it literally, it's called Moonlight. So this, uh, this has become a very important text, also which, which was later translated into Tibetan. And this text also become one of the reference texts of Gyushi also. So that was translated into 10th century. 
Then uh, in the 12th century, uh, younger Yudo Yonbu, Yunde Gumbu, and he began to study medicine at the age of eight. And he has uh, visited India several times to learn medicines and has written many texts on Tibetan medicine. And uh, most importantly, and in particular, he has rewritten the older version of Gyushi, the Four Tantra, that is the uh, fundamental text of Tibetan medicine, into the present version, which is uh, more complete and comprehensive by integrating more medical knowledge in, in, into it. So as I mentioned, uh, this is the Gyushi, the Four Tantras, uh, which has uh, four volumes, which is four volumes, and the first one is uh, the root tantra. The second one is the explanatory uh, tantra, then the oral tantra, and the last one is the subsequent tantra. So uh, this text contains 156 chapters with um, 5,900 verses, and dealing with eight branches of medicines, uh, such as the general health and disease, there's pediatric, gynecology, disorder caused by evil, or we can uh, I term it as psychology. Then there's wounds inflicted by trauma, toxicology, rejuvenation, and in infertility. So these are, uh, these are the eight branches of medicine which was mentioned in the principal text of Tibetan medicine called Gyushi or the Four Tantras. Then um, in the uh, 14th and 15th century, uh, two schools of Tibetan medicine began to emerge. One is called uh, Changba School of Medicine, which was mostly flourished in the central Tibet. Then there is the Subba uh, tradition of Tibetan medicine, which is mostly flourished in southern Tibet. Uh, <clears throat> uh, the main differences of these two uh, schools of medicine is based on uh, some uh, kind of treatments and uh, some based on the identific identification and use of uh, some plants because um, certain plants are not grown in the southern part of Tibet, but uh, some are not grown in the uh, uh, central part of Tibet. So that's why the only main difference is the uses and the identification of some uh, kind of plants. So that is the main uh, differences in this tradition. But both the tradition is based on the main principal text called Gyushi. So the both uh, uh, school of medicine is uh, based on uh, the main text. Then in the uh, 17th century, uh, during the Great Fifth Dalai Lama, uh, the Great Fifth Dalai Lama appointed this is Sangye Gyalso, the Regent Sangye Gyalso. Then under the guidance of uh, Regent Sangye Gyalso, uh, 79 medical uh, tanga was uh, drawn. Actually, uh, mm, the medical paintings were started to be drawn uh, since the uh, 12th century. And there is a whole of oh, 80, 80 medical paintings, which was completed in the uh, 17th century during, uh, uh, during his time. This is Sangye Gyatso. So, and these uh, 80 medical paintings illustrate the whole concepts of Tibetan medicine. And in this, uh, it has illustrated regarding uh, anatomy, physiology, diagnostic method, treatments, and all. All the, you can say, the eight branches of medicine is illustrated in all these uh, medical paintings. And uh, <clears throat> he also established the Chokpo Med Medical College in uh, 1696. And uh, he has written the most popular commentary on Gyushi. Then, um, <laughs> And then uh, 19th century, uh, during uh, the great Thadin Dalai Lama, uh, the Menzi Kang, the Tibetan Medical Astro Institute, was first, first established in uh, 1916. So uh, the great Thadin Dalai Lama appointed Karanova as the director of both Chokpur Medical College and Menzi Kang. And uh, Karanova has written many medical books, and later, uh, he became uh, the lead, also the lead personal physician to the 14th Dalai Lama were his disciples, such as the lead Dr. Ishido and then the recipient of Parmashiri uh, of Medicine from India. 
Then uh, mm, let's talk about uh, some <coughs> the development or the status of Tibet medicine exile. So af after the occup occupation of Tibet by China, so the uh, medicine which was established by the 13th Dalai Lama in 1916 was re-established in India in Dramsala in uh, 1961. So at present, uh, Menzingan is a charitable, cultural, and educational uh, institution. So as I mentioned, it was re-established re in 1961 in Dramsala. So there are two pictures. And the, the upper one is the, the, is the beginning of Menzingan in the 1960s, the way with the, only one clinic. So the lower picture is the present uh, picture of the main office of uh, Menzingan in Dramsala. So at present, uh, Menzing has several departments, uh, such as the main ad administration. There are two colleges. One is based in Dramsala, one is based in Bangalore. And there are two pharmacy units for research departments, and around 60 clinics in India, Nepal, and abroad. And the main objectives of the Menzing is to preserve, promote, and practice Swarigba, or Tibetan medicine and Tibetan astroscience. And it also aims to provide accessible health care to all the people, regardless of caste, creed, color, and nationality. Then, uh, uh, gradually, after the establishment of Menzi Khan in 1961, uh, under the leadership of His Holiness the 14th Dalai Lama, the gradually, other, other medical colleges uh, began to establish, like the Tibetan Medical Section at the Central Institute of Buddhist Studies at Leh in Ladakh, or established in 1989. Like in the Jogbur Medical College established in 1992, then uh, Tibetan Medicine Department at S Central Institute of Higher Tibetan Studies, Saranath, in uh, 1993. Then uh, CCTM established in 2004. Then, um, most importantly, in uh, 2010, Tibetan Medicine is legally recognized as Swarigpa in India under the Ministry of Ayush. Then, from uh, 2012, the Swarga system of medicine is included in the Central Council of Indian Medicine. Then uh, later, uh, the Pelbung Higher Tibetan Studies was established in 2011. Then, uh, uh, Tibetan Medical College of Sorik Bumshim uh, uh, Institute was established in 2021. In 2014, then there is Namgil Institute of uh, Tibetology established in to, uh, 2017. And 2019, the National Institute of Swarigba in Leh was established. So it's uh, an autonomous institute under the Ministry of Ayush and Government of India. And uh, Minzingan has also played a very important role in the establishment, establishment and development of many of these institutes. Then in, uh, in Asian countries, let me uh, <clears throat> briefly, in Russia, the Tibetan medicine law was officially legalized in 1990. Then in, um, and Swarigba is officially integrated into Mongolia's national health system as a traditional Mongolian medicine and is covered by national health uh, insurance. Then in Bhutan, the Swarigba officially became part of the national health care system in 1967. Then in Nepal, in 2018, with the establishment of Ayurveda and Traditional Medicine Council in Nepal, the Tibetan medical system uh, or pharmacy became legalized, legally recognized by the Health Department of Nepal in 2020. So uh, then, um, <coughs> so bet uh, in between 2000 and 2017, there is a tenfold growth of uh, Swarupa pharmaceutical industry in a Asia. So in 2017, the industry had a total sale of value of uh, 677.5 million US dollar. And China and Tibet generate almost 98% of total sale of value. And India has the second largest Swarigba pharmaceutical industry with an annual sale value of 11 million US dollar. So and in the West, there are many medical uh, institutes has been established over the years. So that's concluded. So this is the reference that I've referred from my presentation. And thank you so much. <clears throat>